Okay guys, I just wanted to give you a quick video on blood sugars, insulin and body physiology. Um, blood sugars are an extremely part, um, blood sugar regulation is an extremely important part of health. So I thought I'd just um, do a quick video to explain exactly what happens when you eat sugars and the response that happens in your body. Okay, unstable blood sugars are the number one stressor on your body. Okay, so any excess amounts of glucose floating around your blood is extremely damaging and, in, and inflammatory to your body. Um, during this video we're going to discuss, okay, from your plate to your blood, um, insulin, where it comes from, where it goes and what it does, high insulin, insulin resistance and body physiology, the four stage decline to diabetes, how to accurately test yourself at home, what your GP may be overlooking and what to do about it all if you do find that you have a blood sugar problem. Okay, so from your plate to your cells, if we start at the top, we've got glucose, so we eat glucose like a carbohydrate, um, we absorb that, goes through the stomach quite quickly into the intestines, um, closed circulation system from there to the liver, the liver then pumps it up to the heart, to the lungs for oxygenation, and then out to the blood. Um, once it floats around the blood, the pancreas detects that there's increasing sugars in your blood and will start to release insulin. Um, insulin is what actually shuttles the glucose into the cells. Okay, so it's a, it's a sort of cascading series of events. Um, pancreas is heavily involved with producing insulin to get the glucose into your cells. Okay, so glucose in high amounts is toxic to your body. At any one time, you should only have a maximum of about one teaspoon of glucose in your blood at any one time. Anything more than that is toxic. So it's interesting. I guess not many people would probably know that, but we don't really need that much glucose floating around our bodies. Um, often is the case that we have way too much. Okay, so the negative effects of high insulin. If we start in the top left, high insulin. So lots of glucose floating around, high insulin. The pancreas is cranking out all its insulin. Um, the result in the body physiology is increased blood pressure. You have a decrease in liver function. You have increased inflammation. You have high cholesterol leptin resistance which means you're hungry and you suffer from more cravings you can have mood disorders so lack of motivation lack of positivity towards life and if you keep eating those sugars high enough sugars for long enough you'll either end up with a with a higher cancer risk um, so blood sugar regulations insulin floating around the body is definitely needs to be monitored and adjusted and and set within the right limits Okay, so the path to diabetes is basically a four-stage decline. Okay, the black line you see there on the chart is glucose. Now, um, the two yellow lines is high glucose and low glucose. Okay, so we can see phase one. We've got high insulin and low glucose. Um, if you we're going to get run through a test in a minute, if you find that you you've got high insulin and low glucose, then that's the first sign of diabetes. Um, if you can continue to eat that way, then you'll slowly go over time into phase two, which is high insulin and normal glucose. Um, given enough time again, phase three, normal insulin and high glucose, so the insulin is starting to become resistant um, and you can't get the glucose out of your blood into the cells. Um, so it starts to be problematic. And then phase four, full-blown diabetes, which is low insulin and high glucose. So you've got plenty of sugars floating around your blood, but you can't get them into the cells. That's extremely problematic for body chemistry overall. Okay, so we're going to run through a test and you'll be able to see exactly where you fall on that chart. Okay, so here's the test. You test yourself at home, okay? This is called the glucose tolerance test. Um, please get the approval of your physician before running this test, especially if you have hyperglycemic tendencies. We don't want you certainly driving or anything like that during this test. The idea is to get up out of bed and not do anything for two hours. Just lie or read while you conduct the various recordings from the test. Okay, so what you need, you'll need a glucose meter available from your local chemist. They're just a little pinprick device that can measure your blood glucose levels. Um, you'll need some pure glucose also available at your chemist. Um, you'll need two hours of spare time as mentioned one morning as you get out of bed you have to sit and relead, read or relax after the glucose drink. You can't exercise or walk around or do washing or anything. You've just got to sit or lie and also no other food. That's the only food you're going to have for that morning um, until the test is done. Okay so the process. So you awaken um, you record your blood sugar level using your blood glucose meter, that's your starting point. Um, then you'll drink 75 grams of pure glu glucose in a glass of water. 20 minutes after that you're going to record your blood sugars, okay? And then 20 minutes later again you'll test them again and record it. 20 minutes later again you'll test and record it. And then 30 minutes later you'll test and record it. And then 30 minutes later at the end of the test you'll test and record it again. So the total time for the test is two hours. Um, you will record the various um, glucose, um, blood glucose 
readings in your blood at various intervals and then you'll chart them all out on a graph. So what does it look like when you chart it all out? Okay, so what is the ideal pattern? Okay, so after running that test, um, there can be you'll get a bit of information out of it, okay? So the black line is if you if you found that you charted out and your recordings were roughly around what that black line represents, then you've pretty you've got pretty good blood sugar regulation in your body things are operating pretty well. You, the reason why is because you're finishing at that two hour mark at roughly the same place you started in terms of um, glucose levels in your blood. So nice, nice levels of regulation going on there. Okay, so if you look at the yellow dotted line, you can see that at the end of that test that it, just blood sugars were down lower than what where they were when they started. So that's a hypoglycemic tendency, okay? That's the first stages of insulin resistance. So if you're finding your charts um, looking like that, then you need to do something about about it. If you found that when you chart your recordings out and you hit that red dotted line at the top, then that's full-blown insulin resistance. So you've got very high amounts of glucose in your blood, low amounts of insulin, you can't get the insulin into your cells, and it just starts floating around the blood and causing a whole heap of problems. Okay, so you can quickly work out exactly what stage of insulin resistance you're in by just doing that simple two-hour home glucose challenge test and record charting out the the readings on a, on a graph, so very handy for you. Okay, so other clues, what your GP may be overlooking. So you can look at your symptoms, there's a great questionnaire um, called Free Health Check at theholisticlifestylecenter.com, it's a free download. Um, it looks at 23 different um, things across your health, everything from your thyroid to your adrenals and your blood sugars, so that's why we're mentioning it in this video. Um, so you can tell just from having a look at your symptomology whether you actually have a tendency towards high um, glucose in the blood or low glucose or somewhere in between. Okay, you might have been to the GP and you've got some blood chemistry done. Typically the glucose fasting test that your GP does where you don't eat from midnight the night before. You go get your blood taken in the morning. Um, so most of the time that's usually within range. Um, that test we just showed you on the previous page is probably the better test to run in my opinion. Okay, so the other is don't tend to, GPs tend to measure insulin, but a better marker is C-peptide. Okay, so insulin has a very short half-life, pretty much disappears the moment it's created. C-peptide has a much longer half-life, so it's a much better marker for having a look at what your insulin and your glucose is doing together. And then the other one is a hemoglobin A1C. Not many GPs run that, but you can request it if you like. Um, any readings above 5.7 will also indicate that you've got blood sugar of um, irregularity. Okay, other things might be, you might have a, your cholesterol tested and that might be slightly elevated due to all the inflammation and your HDL might be low, so two good markers in regards to cholesterol. Um, and then cholesterol to triglyceride ratio, not approximately two to one, okay? Most GPs tend to run cholesterol and triglycerides, so you just put that ratio together and if it's not two to one, then you also indicate if that you have a blood sugar problem. So more clues on your blood chemistry than what your GP may have told you about when you first had them run. Okay, so what can you do about it? Um, okay, so some of the key things is never eat a carbohydrate on their own. Okay, so carbohydrates are stuff like um, fruits, vegetables, grains, um, sugars, coffee, alcohol, all that sort of stuff. Um, try and not have them on their own because they cause a massive blood sugar spike in your body. Um, you would need a lot of insulin to get that in and you eventually end up clapping out your pancreas because of the high blood glucose going around in your body, the constant stimulation of the pancreas to release insulin, over time it wears the organ, organ out and you end up with insulin resistance. Okay, the other thing is um, eat according to your metabolic type. So a really neat way to work out exactly how much your metabolism can handle in the way of sugars is to work out your metabolic type. Um, that's largely dependent on your ancestry. So if you're up around sort of polar arctic origin many, many generations ago, you typically need more proteins and fats. If you're down from equatorial ancestry origin, you typically can handle more sugars, more carbohydrates in your diet. So finding out your metabolic type is a huge win for you in regards to stable your blood sugars and promoting your health overall in general. Okay, so eat regularly. Every two to three hours is a general rule. You want to keep your blood sugars nice and stable. When we don't eat for a while, it causes problems. Um, if, um, so you need to eat pretty regularly. Have small meals and always make them eat each meal protein, a fat and a carb. Okay, so back to point number one, never eat those carbohydrates on their own. 
Okay, next part is look at your cortisol level. So cortisol has a direct correlation to blood sugar regularity in your body. So if you've got hormone imbalances around cortisol, then you'll probably have blood sugar regularities as well. So an additional clue for you. Um, exercise. Okay, so there's things called GLUT4 receptors inside your cells. Um, they're about 25% of the total receptors for insulin on your cell. Um, they're only activated by through exercise, okay, so aerobic and anaerobic. So a bit of walking or some resistance weights does wonders. Um, people that don't exercise, you automatically bring your blood sugar irregularity problems down, um, compromising them by about 25% because you're not activating those GLUT4 receptors which is why um, if you're showing signs of insulin resistance your GP usually always tells you to start exercising because you'll activate those more receptors and you'll be able to get more glucose into your into your cells okay the other thing is good quality foods okay the body just generally doesn't like um, poor quality foods it causes massive metabolic imbalance across all levels so good quality foods is always the key try and eat like your great 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 grandmother used to eat or great grandfather um, high food food quality free range meats um, quality oils get away from the margarines um, all that stuff nonsense that we get told to eat and just go back 100 years in time and eat what we used to eat Okay, then it's also supplements designed to improve insulin function, okay, so you can use those in some extreme cases to get better insulin function at the cellular level. Okay, so that was about it for 